All right, welcome to Inside Dev Mission, episode number five. It's a great pleasure for us to have someone that has joined the organization today. And with that, we're going to get started right into this wonderful interview that we have available for all of you out there today. So we're going to start introducing someone very special to the organization. Welcome, Deborah Jaramillo, to our Inside Dev Mission, episode number five. Thank you, Leo. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm really excited and looking forward to sharing a lot of uh, great things today. Great. Well, looking forward. So let's get right into it. I know you mentioned your name already, but just for everyone out there, can you please tell us your full name and your role with the organization? Hi, everyone. My name is Deborah Jaramillo, and I am currently the COO, Deputy Director for Dev Mission. That's a nice title. <laughs> Thank you. How do you feel about that? <laughs> it's uh, it's surreal. You know, it's been a long time coming, and I am really excited to what's to come forward. So tell everyone, how did you get involved with Dev Mission? So I actually got involved with Dev Mission uh, four years ago when we co-founded the organization. It was an exciting time for a lot of us. We had a group of technologists um, that came together and we had one mission and one vision of reaching out to our youth in our city and really preparing them for careers in the tech industry. And I was part of that. So it was very exciting to see it all come together. And now look at us four years later. It's very exciting and um, I'm looking forward to more years to come. (laughs) Great. Um, So, uh, you know, just imagine once you start getting involved with an organization and especially for everyone out there to try to get involved with organizations, it's very important for them to know also um, that typically there are certain paths. And as you know, we continue to create the next generation of tech talent with our organization. So I'm pretty sure everyone wants to know, how did you get your career in tech or how did it start? Well, the earliest I can remember is back in 2003, I was part of a program very similar to Dev Mission, where I received training um, in computer and um, was able to give back to the community that way. And I was part of the mayor's office, you know, Um, and so that was really exciting. And, you know, at the time, it seemed that a career in the tech industry probably wasn't attainable. But I was provided the resources and the tools um, to get to where I am today. If I'm not mistaken, there's a story around that type of program. You want to share with the audience that story? Yeah, it's been a while since I've shared that story. Uh, The story uh, within that program was, you know, after we received the training um, in computer hardware and software, we were able to then go out into the community and teach all ages how to use computers. Um, We were dealing with kids in elementary school, middle school, high school. We were dealing with the elderly community um, who are not that much, you know, tech savvy. Um, And so I came across a lady probably in her 70s uh, and she had never touched the computer. And she started coming to our classes and I was able to have that one on one with her and teaching her even how to maneuver the mouse how to type and um, really just learning little by little um, what it was to 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 utilize a computer and, and 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 the the things that you can do using the internet and uh, one day she came up to me and said you know I got to know her a little bit better <clears throat> and she said I, I haven't spoken to my son in some time uh, it was uh, at least a few years and she he was out of the country. But she did have, uh, well, she showed me the little paper and it was an email address. And at that moment, I said, my goodness, let's communicate with him right away. I'll show you how to do this. So uh, we created an email address for her. She was very excited. We started typing away. You know, by this time she was learning how to type and she wrote a nice little letter and um, hit the send button. And the very next day she came back to the lab and she was communicating with him and he wrote back to her and it was just nice to see how something that could be maybe insignificant to us was all that meant to her. Uh, and she was able to communicate with her son after many years and 
it's just an amazing story of how technology really changes and has changed the world and how many benefits there are um, to those that have access to it. That's a great story. So for everyone out there, you can still help a lot of people with the use of technology. But imagine the power of young people having access to technology and then giving back to communities. And that's really one of the wonderful opportunities we offer as well with our organization. So not only you were able to help this uh, low-income families, uh, you were probably at school at that time. And, and tell us your journey then into education. How did you transfer from school, from the program you talked about, and you say, this is what I want to do. So tell everyone uh, a little bit of background about from your education. Yeah, a little bit. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm from San Francisco, born and raised, and um, I ended up coming across this program in the Visitation Valley and uh, after school, we just go out there and I got to meet amazing kids, you know, my age, really just striving uh, for the same goal. And um, I remember one day we went to go visit Yahoo. We had a site visit, a corporate site visit. And I'll never forget that day because you're literally walking. This is when Yahoo was the thing. Now it's Google, right? But <laughs> uh, back in the day when Yahoo was it, um, you're going into this campus. I mean, it's a whole city in there. You know, they have, um, you know, a volleyball court, they had a daycare, they had um, coffee stands all across every floor. And I'm thinking, this is all free for everyone. Like, <laughs> everyone who works here can, you know, has access to all of this and a gym. And it was just really um, eye opening to see, um, you know, my I, I wasn't raised um, or I, I had limited resources growing up. So when I went into the site visit, um, it was really just mind blowing to see, um, that one day, you know, that could be me one day if I, um, you know, get the education and I prepare myself with the resources and, and the tools that uh, I've been able to, to have, I can get there one day. And so I continued my journey and graduated from the program and, um, ended up at Dominican university for, um, my bachelor's in business and I minored in communications um, it was an amazing time there. I wanted to kind of just stay close to home. <laughs> um, and you know, the experience was just un unforgettable and being able to get to know people and really trying to decide, you know, wh what am I really passionate about? And, you know, first few years, uh, maybe first year, at least <laughs> you're kind of undecided on, on what to major in and, and you're really just trying to focus or, or find your, your passion, um, I've always loved numbers. I've always loved people. And so I went the business route and, um, ultimately I was able to, once I graduated, I, I was able to start my career in banking and, um, that was an amazing experience. I actually continued with graduate school while I was working full time at the bank. So you can imagine, uh, as a young person, not being able to have really a social life. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, but I was still able to stay connected, right? We have Facebook at the time. That's when it started, you know, taking off. Um, so you still are able to stay connected with family and friends to, through technology. Um, and so I continued my banking career for, you know, as of this year, 10 years. Uh, so it was, uh, an amazing experience, and I learned a lot. I met some amazing people. Um, but through those years, I've always uh, really just given back to the community through nonprofits um, in my community. And, and church is a really big part of my life as well. And so that kept me busy and, you know, just always giving back to the community because I was once part of, you know, um, the, the the youth community in the area that needed those resources, that needed tools, that needed guidance, that needed mentorship. Mm -hmm. And so giving back to the community has always been a part of my life. And when we co-founded Deb Mission, you know, it was, it was a long time coming. <laughs> and I still remember uh, when we met at Starbucks, <laughs> you're like, I have this crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> and we were all on board, you mm -hmm. know, and, and I'll never forget that day. And um, it's just amazing to see, um, how our vision has flourished. Um, and always the commitment is, is for our young people. And that's always been what I've been committed to as well. 
That's great. Thank you for sharing that journey and encourage everyone out there to not only continue to find those opportunities for young people, but if you have friends, relatives, uh, siblings, you know, we always want to make sure that we empower them to choose their journey. So uh, being able to hear that from your end is, is gratifying because that's the reason why we continue to do this amazing work with this organization. So thank you for sharing that journey with us. And uh, for everyone out there, it will be probably um, easier to understand why you decided to join this organization. So perhaps you can tell us a little bit more about the transition process and what made that decision uh, so um, exciting for you to be part of it. Yeah, the transition from banking into <clears throat> Dev Mission um, was one that, you know, was long overdue. <laughs> um, when we co-founded Dev Mission four years ago, I knew that eventually I was going to have to decide mm -hmm. what was going to be my path. Mm -hmm. uh, working in banking for 10 years, I mean, that's all I've known. <laughs> and I was very successful and I met some amazing people and created long, you know, relationships. Um, but you really just come to the realization, I think, through this pandemic, I think for all of us, anyone out there, um, this pandemic really shifted maybe your way of thinking, mm -hmm. the way that you feel, um, and just really put things into perspective. And for me, it was family. I knew that family comes first. I learned that no matter what, um, whether you're, you have a job, whether you don't have a job, whether you have a house, whether you don't have a house, your family is always going to be there. And I have a toddler and uh, she's three. And I knew that I had to make a change because uh, I'm not going to get these years back with her. I'm not going to get the years back with my family. And so working through this pandemic also, you know, at the bank, definitely there was heightened emotions for everyone, um, clients and, and my employees. And I really just had to put things into perspective um, and I realized, what is my passion? What am I truly passionate about? Um, and no doubt about it, you know, it's Dev Mission. This is what I put my heart into. And I see the success that we've had. I see the relationships that we built with our youth and the progress that they're making. Um, and just being a part of it is so gratifying and life-changing um, that I came to the decision you know what, I am really going to transition full time mm -hmm. and commit myself and, and bring my skill sets along the way. Thank you. Thank you for doing that. So as we continue to speak more about this transition process and the opportunity the organization has been giving you and as well, uh, the benefits, right, for being able to come in to the mission, to bring your experience, uh, to bring your passion. Um, can you tell everyone out there, um, if you can say maybe in a short minute or two, uh, what is the best thing about working uh, for Dev Mission or with Dev Mission? The best thing of <clears throat> working with Dev Mission for me first is seeing the success that our youth has. When you see a young person who maybe doesn't even have a laptop at home and their eyes just open up like, wow, this is actually mine. I can mm -hmm. call this my own. And then you see the training that they're getting. Mm -hmm. And I know with COVID, everything has been virtual, but they're still getting that knowledge and they're still receiving that training. And you see the progress that they make from day one until graduation day, <laughs> where you can see everything that they've built. Um, you know, it, that, that's one of the things that, that I find, you know, the, the most amazing um, working with, with Demission. And, you know, just seeing these kids being exposed mm -hmm. to technology, being exposed to the Steam Hub, being exposed to the Digital Music Lab, <laughs> being exposed to the peer apprenticeship program. Mm -hmm. uh, it's amazing because these are kids of all ages, all different mm -hmm. backgrounds, you know, different life stories. Um, but they're all there to learn and to grow. Um, and second is um, all the volunteers and the staff. <clears throat> You know, everyone mm -hmm. in the organization really is committed um, for driving our mission mm -hmm. and supporting our youth and disrupting the tech industry mm -hmm. and getting them 
the resources and the tools and the connections that they need to grow. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for saying that. And um, it's kind of gratifying to see uh, throughout this journey, uh, you being part of our board for four years, uh, at some point being able to help us with financials and filing all of the information, uh, getting the organization documentation going, right? And at some point, uh, you realize that if you're doing all this amazing work, it's not because I'm doing it because I want a name for myself. It's not that. It's about the young people that are part of the program. So the next question I have for you has to do with that. Why do you believe that the programs that we have available right now and eventually in the future, perhaps a few more, are so beneficial for the young people that are part of it? Yeah, the programs that we have now are extremely beneficial. First, you know, it's a free program. You don't have mm -hmm. to pay for it. One of the things that I notice is there's a lot of boot camps out there. There's a lot of train, amazing training, but they cost, you know, they cost thousands of dollars. Um, and a lot of these kids, yeah, most of them can't afford that. I couldn't afford it uh, if I was in their shoes. And so when you're okay. able to see that this, you know, our dev mission programs are tailored um, to their needs, to what it is they need to grow academically, mm -hmm. intellectually, and, um, you know, throughout their, their career when we're, when, and when they're deciding to, to choose what career path they're going to take, um, it's truly what differentiates us. Our people, our instructors, once again, our volunteers, um, the people that are there every day mm -hmm. and mentoring our youth. Um, you know, a lot of the time, Dev Mission program is their best part of their day. And so being in lockdown, being through this pandemic, um, Dev Mission has created an avenue for them to explore okay. more things, to explore what other avenues there are for my career, for my education. And, um, you know, once they, I see them graduate and then they're in college <laughs> with a computer science major and then they graduate and they get a full-time job <laughs> in the tech industry. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, that's what we're doing. We're disrupting the tech industry and we're getting, you know, our young people educated. We're getting them the training that they need and we're connecting them to those people in the tech industry. That's awesome to hear. So I uh, hope you all out there that are doing the same thing that Deborah is being a CEO, deputy director, being a board member, being a volunteer, uh, it really brings a lot of joy when you bring that passion into the work that everybody does on a daily basis. And, and you can feel it. Even though everything is virtual, you can still see the emotions of our staff being recognized and our participants being motivated to do the best they can. So along those lines now, um, why do you think Deaf Mission is so different than any other nonprofit organization out there? Uh, we're very different. Uh, one of our, well, our slogan, as soon as you walk into whenever you guys will, whenever we return, you'll be able to see uh, you belong here. And so it doesn't matter your background, doesn't matter, you know, what you've done, who you are, uh, you belong here. And so it's a very community oriented organization. It's an organization that not only after the program, we say, okay, our work here is done, but we continue working with you to find other avenues for you to continue growing. And so for me, when I see that, because I've been a part of other programs where, yeah, you graduate and then you just never hear from them again. Mm -hmm. But we have that connection built. We have our alumni, you know, reaching back out to us and we are reaching back out to them and we're still connecting with them and we're still helping them mm -hmm. and connecting them to whoever it is that they need to be connected with. And so to me, that's very important. And it shows how much we care for our young people um, and continue developing them um, through their career and, and through their education. Well, thank you for those answers. I know it's a, a small interview, but we're looking forward to continue to learn more about your journey, uh, how you decided to leave corporate America to join this wonderful organization, this nonprofit. So before we wrap up the interview, I always come out of the cuts, right, with questions. And <laughs> during this episode, a lot of the young people and also other board members that we are interviewed, like, oh, man, what is Leo going to ask me? <laughs> so I'll be ready for this one. Um, but I wanted to ask you, from your personal point of view, 
where do you see Deaf Mission going? Um, as you know, we're about to turn four years old, and year five is probably one of the hardest years for any nonprofit to really identify what the strategic plan is, what are the goals, and, and when it comes down to fundraising. So where do you think all the programs that you're managing now, uh, where do you think they're going to go, uh, you know, eventually? What, what is your vision for that? Yeah, um, as I sit here and think, you know, we have a STEAM hub, we have our digital music lab, we have the pre-apprenticeship program, and you're right, we are about to, you know, hit our four-year mark and our five-year mark. Um, my dream would be to have dev mission programs all around the country in every <laughs> affordable housing unit <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and create this safe place for kids, for young people to come and learn and retain the knowledge and get connected and stay connected and continue and continue developing them. Um, you know, we are, our youth is our next generation that are coming up and they need a lot of support and they need a lot of resources and the tools and we're providing that for them right now. And so although we're just in San Francisco right now, I definitely see us growing into the Bay Area and abroad to different states, hopefully. Uh, but really the goal is to maintain um, that vision of supporting, of connecting and just allowing them to grow intellectually, uh, individually, um, and, and get to where they need to be. So Deborah, thank you for allowing us to be part of this wonderful interview. Uh, inside Dev Mission, episode number five. And I just want to take a moment to first acknowledge the wonderful work that you have done, um, the passion that you brought for the past four years to the organization, uh, being out there representing the organization in many events, coming out to graduations, uh, being involved with some of the work that we were doing. And, and now you're going to be able to not only manage those programs, but really understand how wonderful it is to work with partners, with funders, sponsors, and most importantly, the kids, the youth, and the young adults that are part of our program. So on behalf of our board of directors, our organization sponsor, funders, volunteers, our staff, uh, but most importantly, all the young people that you're going to be uh, meeting within the next months, not only from the current cohorts, but the alumni that are not being requesting to like, hey, I want to work with Deborah. I want to get to know her. And uh, <laughs> they're excited to see that a Latina that was born and raised in San Francisco did a major out there in Europe, came back to work in the finance sector, and you decided to leave that behind to say, hey, I'm coming to Dev Mission. I want you to be my family, and we're so thankful that you're going to make that transition. So not only as the founder and CEO and executive director, I just want to thank you for making this transition. I'm excited about you joining this organization, and I know the organization is going to benefit more uh, from being able to, to do that. But I just want to take a moment to address everyone out there. Uh, please continue to be safe. Uh, try to make sure that you try to not only pay attention to everything that we have done within a year, uh, everything has changed, but no matter what, we're going to continue to do this amazing work. We're going to continue to build the next generation of tech talent. And I also want to recognize our board members uh, today, uh, Curtis Nussbaum, Abraham Velasquez, April Alvarez, uh, Francis Lee, and Taylor Booker for allowing Deborah to join the organization now as our COO, Deputy Director. So thank you all. Looking forward to see you on the next Inside Dev Mission, which we just don't know who we're going to bring to the table, but I know you love to hear more stories about the impact we're making. Take care. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Leo.